This video is a tutorial for Google Sheets for the iPad. Google Sheets is Google's equivalent of Microsoft Excel or Numbers from Apple. Now just like the other apps from Google such as Google Docs and Google Slides, there are numerous limitations, things that you can't do through the web version of these apps and especially in comparison to some of the other apps you can get from Apple and Microsoft. However, it is free and it's definitely worth something exploring. Some of those limitations include conditional formatting and drop down menus. So you can't actually create those inside this app. However, if you were to open a doc that had those elements on it, it would still function fine. You just can't add those particular functions without using the desktop version of Google Sheets. So when you open up Google Sheets, you're greeted with this screen. It's your document selection screen. And it will usually show you some of your most recent documents. Now, if you go to the three lines in the top left corner of the screen, we have numerous options here. The first being to switch between different Google accounts. If you have more than one Google account, you need to access files in different places. It really is easy. It's just a question of tapping on the email address at the top. I've blocked mine out so you can't see it, but trust me, it's there. And you can just choose your other account and access those files. It's really simple. Now below that, we've got several different tabs. The first being recent, which is the screen that we started on, which will just show you the recent files you've worked on. Below that, we have starred files or folders. Now a starred file is one that you might use quite frequently and you can choose which files or folders are starred. So if there's a particular document you need to open on a regular basis, you can save those almost like favorites and you can access them here. Below that, we have shared with me. If you work collaboratively with other people, any files or folders that you share between you will appear in this section here. Then we have a section for offline files. Recent files can automatically be made available offline and then you can also choose other files if you want to be able to use it without internet access. When you connect to the internet again, those files will be synced with your Google Drive account. Below that we have the bin. Any recently deleted files would be temporarily stored here. And then we have the Google Drive folder for you to access your Google Drive account. And then near the bottom we have settings. The first option is to switch between different accounts again. Below that we have a toggle for making recent files available offline. And then we can choose default apps. Apps that if we were to click a link in a spreadsheet, what app do you want it to open, whether that's Chrome or Safari, Gmail or the inbuilt mail app, uh, the Maps apps, and so on. Now at the moment, I only have two documents available. If you had quite a few and you wanted to search for them, just near the top right corner, we have this magnifying glass icon and I can just search for files like that and it will bring up the files I'm looking for. Now, if you want to create a document, we can have a look at the bottom right hand corner of the screen where we can see this multicolored plus icon. And when I tap on it, I've got two options. I can create from a template or create an entirely new spreadsheet. If you choose from a template, you've got numerous different inbuilt templates provided to you from Google. These include budget documents, calendars, to do lists um, and other things like project tracking and grade books if you work in education. I'm going to choose create a new spreadsheet from scratch. So this is my blank document. To navigate, I can just swipe from left to right or up and down. And I can make use of pinch to zoom to get a close up look or a distant look at my spreadsheet. Just like with Microsoft Excel, I can have numerous different sheets within my document. At the bottom we have this grey strip, the first saying sheet one, which is the document I'm currently working with. All the way at the end there's a plus icon and I can just tap on that to create multiple sheets. If I tap on a sheet, then tap on the arrow next to it, I have some options here. I can delete a sheet, I can duplicate it, I can rename it. And from here, I can also freeze rows and columns. This means that the top row or rows or the leftmost column or columns can be always in view no matter where you scroll on the spreadsheet. Simply increasing the number 
will determine how many rows at any time are always viewable. To input data on the spreadsheet, I can simply tap on a cell and begin typing. Currently I'm using a physical keyboard. If you don't have one, when you tap a cell, the on-screen keyboard will appear. Now you'll notice that once I have a cell selected, the bottom strip which shows me my available sheets has now disappeared. If I want to get that back, I can tap on the tick in the top left corner of the screen. Now editing text is quite straightforward. If I tap on a cell, a menu bar appears at the top, giving me a few quick options, including bold, underline, strike through. I can change the color of the text, its alignment, as well as its vertical alignment if I have a cell that is quite big. I can also turn on word wrapping if I'm entering in quite a long string of text. Text editing options are also available if I select a cell, then choose the third icon from the right in the top right corner of the screen. As well as the previously discussed options, I can also change the font size, as well as the rotation of the text. This is useful if you are dealing with a very big spreadsheet and you have numerous different columns and you want to save space. So I can actually turn the rotation of the text. And at any point, you can clear the formatting to get rid of any changes that you've made. With a cell already selected, if I tap on it again, a context menu will appear. This includes options such as cut, copy and paste. I can leave a comment if I'm working collaboratively. I can clear the cell or I can add a note. If I want to edit multiple cells, it's quite easy to do. But first, you have to select them. I'm going to select the January cell. With this cell selected, you'll notice there's a blue circle in the top left and the bottom right of the cell. If I tap and hold on it, I can select multiple cells. Any changes that I make applies to all of the selected cells. If I want to select a column throughout the entire spreadsheet, I can select the header row right at the top, the one that says A, B, C, D, etc. If I tap on one of those letters, the entire column is selected. If I want to expand my selection, you will notice there are two blue circles on the left and right of the current selection. If I tap and hold on one of those and drag to the left or right, you can see my selection is now much bigger. This also works with rows. If I select one of the numbers at the left, I can select the entire row. The blue circles appear, and if I just tap, hold and drag, I can make a much larger selection. To resize a column or a row, again I have to tap on one of the header rows. And if I tap and hold on the edge of one of the header rows, I can then drag it to make the column wider or narrower. Now just like before when I selected a cell we can see those text editing options at the top but the last four icons here actually give us options to insert a column or a row before and after my selection. The first will insert a row underneath my selection. The second one inserts it above. The third one will insert a column to the right. And the last one will insert a column to the left. Now before I show you anything else, I'm just going to quickly add some more data to my table. To add a border to the table, I first have to make my selection. Then just to the left of those insert row and column buttons I showed you earlier, I can add a border. 
This can be a border throughout the table, around the edge, or on one particular side of the table. I can change the border style and the border color. The edit menu in the top right corner of the screen also gives me some more options to edit a cell or a group of cells. With this menu open, you can see there are two tabs at the top. The first saying text, which I've already shown you, but next to that, we have cell. The first option allows us to add a fill color to the cell that we have selected. I can adjust the borders just like I showed you before. I can also turn on text wrapping and I can merge cells. Below that, we can change the format of any number that's inserted onto the spreadsheet. I'm going to select all the numbers in the second column. When I choose format, you can see that there are numerous different options. I'm going to choose currency. If you want more currency formats, you can just select that option at the bottom here. And here you can choose different currencies from around the world. It's also possible to change the number of decimal places. You'll notice that now I've selected a group of cells with some numbers inside, the strip along the bottom has given me some quick sum options. This will usually consist of things like a total sum, an average, a maximum or a minimum amount. If you want to enter in your own formula, you can tap on an empty cell and type in the information that you would like. In the very bottom left of the screen, you'll see a button that says FX, and this allows us to insert many different functions. There are quite a lot to choose from, and to be honest, I'm not going to go through all of these because this would require a several hour long tutorial video. But if you're familiar with using Excel or Google Sheets, then you should be able to use some of these things. I'm going to just do a simple date insert. If I choose today, it will insert today's date. And this will change depending on when you open up the document. It will always keep up to date, which can be really useful for things like invoices. Now I'm going to show you how to create a chart using the data that you've put onto your spreadsheet. I'm going to select the table that I've created. And from here, I can tap the plus icon in the top right corner of the screen. If I choose chart, it will take that selection and create a table for me automatically. It also gives me some editing options. For example, chart type allows me to choose what type of graph I would like to display. If you're working with more complex data sets, legend will allow you to set up a legend and choose where that appears on the chart itself. You can also insert a bunch of titles an overall chart title and the title for the axis on the graph. Finally, you can change the color scheme of the chart. When you're finished, you can tap the tick in the top left corner of the screen and that chart will now be inserted. You can tap to select the chart and tap again and hold to move it around the screen. To resize it, you can tap on one of the blue circles in the top left or bottom right to change its overall size. It's also possible to insert an image, for example, a company logo. Tap the plus icon in the top right of the screen and then choose image. There are two options here. You can insert an image directly within a cell or a free floating image, a bit like the chart we've just seen that can be positioned any way you like. 
the photos can come from your photo library or you can use your device's inbuilt camera to take a photo. Just like with a chart, I can tap, hold and drag to move its position and use the blue circles to resize it. In the top right corner of the screen, we also have a few other icons. We can see undo and redo. We have a share button to allow us to share with different people by email address. We can also view a summary of all the comments on the document. And then the last icon, we have three dots, which gives us some more options. Again, we can view the comments that have been left if we're working collaboratively. And then we have find and replace. The text in the first cell allows us to search for a particular word. In the second cell, we enter what we want to replace it with. Tapping replace finds one match and then tapping it again will replace that word. Back on our three dots menu, you can see the third option is for explore. This gives us a set of quick actions if we want to work quite quickly. For example, if I just choose the table once again that I created earlier, tap the three dots and choose explore, it will give me the option to create a few different types of graphs quickly. If I want to insert those graphs, I can tap on the graph icon just next to the X at the top right corner of the screen. Before I show you the next function, I'm going to quickly create a new set of data. In this new table that I've created, you can see that it's now a column that says category. And it's here, we're going to create a filter. I'm going to tap on the top cell, tap on the three dots, and then choose create a filter. You can now see the arrows have been placed along all three cells in the header. If I tap on the arrow for category, you can see that I can filter out particular pieces of information. For example, I may just want to see the fiction books. It's from this menu that I can also sort the information that I have available. I'm going to tap on the sales column and choose that arrow. From here, I can sort the data either ascending or descending. If you're working with quite a complex set of data, you can choose to add further conditions to your filters. This could be containing particular words, or if a cell is empty. If I want to remove any filters, I can tap on the three dots and then choose remove filter. Some of the other options available in this menu include viewing the file details. And then I have my share and export functions. I can share this via Google Drive and work collaboratively with other people, or I can create a link which will copy a link to my clipboard, allowing me to share it with other people to view. I can send a copy if I want to send this file using another app. I have print, and this will work if I have a, an AirPrint compatible printer. Below that, I can save this as an Excel file, or I can duplicate this file and make a copy of it. The final two options allow us to choose whether this file is available offline and whether I'm going to favorite this file by creating a star file. To leave this document, I can tap on the arrow in the top left of the screen. And this takes me back to my document selection window. To finish, I'm just gonna show you a few quick actions that are available to you. For each one of our files, we can see three dots at the end. These give us some quick actions that means we don't have to open the file if we want to do something. From this menu, I can save it as an Excel file. I can share it, add or remove it from our starred file section, make it available offline, turn on link sharing. I can send a copy, rename, move it, view the details and activity. I can print or I can delete this file. So that's it for this tutorial on Google Sheets for the iPad. If you found this video useful, please like, comment and subscribe. 
and I'll be back soon with some more iPad tutorials.